I I if we if you know, swear by the Almighty God. Swear by the Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give before this committee. That the evidence I shall give before this committee. Touching the matter in issue. Touching the mat the matter in issue. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Honorable Esiama, Minister Designate for Transport, you held that portfolio for the last four years. That was your first time in public service. Before that, you were a private businessman. Now, this portfolio has been expanded to cover aviation. Is that right? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Now, is there anything else you want to tell us as a nominee? Mr. Chairman, basically, that is all. As Sorry, I didn't hear you. I said, I've identified you. I've said you are a businessman and you became a public servant, a minister. Is there anything else you want us to know about you? You don't want to go through your CV one by one. Just a few things that you think you must know in addition to this few. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, like we said, I am a poor boy from Central Region, Edentia, a town called Dominasi. I am married with four kids. My wife is here. I'm sure he's sitting. All right. Mr. Chairman, I hold a Bachelor of Commerce degree from the University of Cape Coast. And like you rightly said, before 2017, I was in the private sector. In 2017, I assumed the president nominated me to be the minister for transport, and I held that office from 2017 to January 6, 2021. Yes, very well. I want to warm him up in the, in the, in the ways of honorable uh, minority leader. Um, Honorable Isiyama, in, in, in all difficulties and dangers, in whom do you put your trust? You just took an oath. In all difficulties and dangers, do, in whom do you put your trust? In all difficulties and dangers, in whom do you put your trust? In when the oath you just took. In Almighty God. Very well. That's assured. I shall proceed with the next request. Please, um, address us with on this Frontier Healthcare Services. It's come up, and we want to know from you. Is, have you have you come across this contract, Healthcare Frontier Services? Mr. Chairman. Before we started this frontier services business. I wasn't the minister for aviation. But upon the president who nominated me to that office, Ministry of Aviation has been, has been realigned back to the mother transport station. Mr. Chairman, upon the realignment, I've had some briefing from Ghana Airport Company concerning the Frontiers Medical Health Services issue. Mr. Chairman, the little brief I received from them is that, if you quite remember, around January, August, the President made a statement that the country was just about to be reopening its international uh, airport, and for that matter, we needed that facility at the airport to curtail the vaccine entering the country. So according to Ghana Airport Company, they had a proposal from the Frontier Group saying that they had the capacity to undertake the offering of their laboratory services. Mr. Chairman, for the brief that I have received, so they presented their documentation to them. And then Ghana Airport Company wrote to 
Food and Drugs Authority to authenticate the equipment or the certified equipment that the people were supposed to use for their laboratory services. Mr. Chairman, the Food and Drugs Board around August for the briefing wrote back to Ghana Airport Company, in fact, certifying that those equipment they have those equipment are the equipment that they can use to perform that activity. Subsequent to that, they wrote back to PPA that they have these people have come to them, they have found out from FDA, FDA has certified that the equipment is the equipment that they can use. So they wanted to go ahead with their normal rental concession agreement that they have been granting to their clients at the airport to proceed to engage the people for the transaction. Mr. Chairman, PPA wrote back, which I have a copy of the PPA to them, which I can handle, telling them that what they were seeking to do, that is a rental distance that has not fall within their payment, that they should use their administrative processes to engage the people. So they went ahead and had a normal contract that they have, like I said, they have been having with their client at the airport and engage the people to undertake the laboratory services testing that they are doing at the So, Mr. Chairman, basically that is why I know about this Frontier Medical Services matter. Thank you very okay. much. So, have you cited a contract between Ghana Airport Company and the Frontier Healthcare Services? As yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have cited a contract and if anything, I can hand it over to the house. So, upon demand, you can make this available to us? Right, Mr. Chairman. Can you enlighten us a bit on this procurement issue? You are saying that the, they wrote to PP, and PPA responded that the services or the nature of the agreement falls outside of their mandate in accord with law. Are you able to explain a bit of that? And if the letter is here, you have it. Can you read it? Uh, yes. To, to add. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Ghana Airport Company wrote to PPA, and on 26th of August 2020, the headline reads, Re-approval to rent office space at Terminal 3 Company, Terminal 3 Dash Company, to test for COVID 19. Mr. Chairman, the letter reads, We acknowledge the receipt of your letter reference GL 1256946, dated August 25th, 2020, on the above subject matter, and have divest and has and have digested its contents. However, we advise that the rental of office space, and in this particular case, being rented out to another company falls outside the scope of the Public Procurement Act at 63 as amended. The Ghana Airport Company is therefore requested to use administrative procedures to execute this transaction. We count on your cooperation. The Managing Director, Ghana Airport Company Limited. Chairman, just a follow-up to the Honorable Deputy Leader's question. What you read, your own heading, rental of office space, is that what you are referring to as the frontline health workers procurement contract? Yeah. Rental of office space. Are you equating that to a procurement process which allowed for Frontier to be taking $150 million per Ghanaian traveler, $150 US dollars per Ghanaian to undertake COVID, rental of office space. Is that the same thing as procurement process to get that transaction done? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Ghana Airport Company only runs space to people who operate at our port. So what we could do, or they could do at that time, the people at our port, they, they need a space for that function, which they wrote to P PPA to grant them the permission to run the space. So chairman agreed 
you tender that in evidence for our purposes. You are suggesting to this committee that the contract to which the deputy leader asked you, and you said, yes, you have cited it, the contract is about renting of office space and nothing more. Am I correct in suggesting that? Yes, indeed, Mr. Chairman, that is so. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Honorable nominee, um, do you have a copy of the contract with you, please? Um, please look at the charges, if there is any provision for charges. And apprise us as to, I want to follow up on the leader's question, that the renter, because according to, to you, Ghana Airport wrote to PP that it wants to undertake this uh, transaction with another company. They need the approval under a particular provision. They write back saying that the nature of the services you can use, you should use your administrative, uh, internal administrative procedure. Now, look at that contract you have before you, the aspect relating to charges, if there is, and in detail, give us in each category what charges or what revenue Ghana S uh, Airport Company is supposed to uh, get or generate from this, so that we will know whether it is only rental of office space or the Ghana Airport Company is benefiting from other uh, charges apart from the renting of the office space. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, per the contract that I'm having, I can't cite any charges in this contract. What I normally know is that Ghana Airport Company get royalties from all their clients at the airport. That is all. Chairman, okay. chairman is acting as the chairman. Minister, if, there's a if, chairman, sorry. If it's a rental space, what do you call royalties? Are you referring to rent? Mr. Chair, then you should read the con what, which aspect. Read all the and charges. Then, and then, Chairman, just to what Honorable Deputy Leader have asked. Minister Designate, when you are reading the contract, uh, probably you may not have the kind of training the deputy leader or the chair or I have. Read the recitals of your contract for our record. We want you to read. Contract between, give us the names with the date. Thank you for our records. Mr. Chairman, it reads to agreement between Ghana Airport Company Limited and Frontiers Healthcare Services Limited for the provision of COVID-19 testing service at the airport arrival Terminal 3, Kutuka International Airport, Accra. Mr. Chairman, let me check purpose of contract terms agreement. Mr. Chairman, there should be a revenue portion. Yes, a Mr. Standard Chairman, 4.21, like the, the Honorable Deputy Minister, is asking for state that whatever the and Ghana Airport Company, GC, GACL, and Lancisi recognize that this agreement has been stated by COVID 19. And given the national emergency, have agreed that the Lancisi shall pay GACL $10 per test conducted. And what are the charges again? What are the charges? Mr. Chairman, I will come back if I find any charges again. But so. Honorable Member, you said you can give us copies. Yes, Do I you can have give extra copy. copies with you. If you go, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I have extra copies. Yeah. If you have extra copies, can you give? No, no, I don't have an extra copy. When I finish the trial, I can Oh, very well. I thought. We have extra copies now which you can look we could look at. What is the validity of this contract, please? Yes, when no, Chema, it... it's for two years. Now it came up strongly that the 
company, Frontier Healthcare Services, is not even a registered company in Ghana. From what you have seen on the document, the contract, is it stating Frontier Healthcare Services, Ghana Limited, or does it appear on the face of the document that this is a, a registered company in Ghana? Mr. Chairman, uh, the information that I have recovered is a registered company in Ghana. And have you received any briefing with respect to how Ghana Airport Company came to a decision to rely on this company and none other? Mr. Chairman, Per the information that I have, the brief I have from Ghana company was, was that this company approached them and they proved that they have the capacity to undertake the plan. And I don't have any reason or any information again that other company also approved them. So, is it your case that those equipment from the briefing you received, the equipment they are using at the airport, are not one of such equipment that are being used by other laboratories already in the country? Mr. Chairman, when PPA, when they approach PP, when they approach Ghana Airport Company that they have the capacity to and that they have the equipment, like I said, they wrote to, P, to Food and Drugs Authority to authenticate or certify the equipment that they are using. So basically that is what they did. What are the other people are using other facilities that I, I do not have knowledge about it. But I am following up with this because there is this strong view that, oh, Noguchi is there doing testing and all that. Why another company doing testing at the airport? Perhaps some people are of the view that, oh, why didn't Noguchi set up at the airport? I mean, it's come up strongly. Uh, my colleague Ablaka has expressed a strong view, especially the cost. Would you, upon confirmation, impress upon them to look at their charges. We, we already know that as for ECOWA citizens, by virtue of the heads of state coming to a certain agreement, we are enjoying some rebate. But would you, would you consider engaging them to further look at this since it has become a matter of public concern? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, any Thing that will make a Ghanaian happy or satisfied. I will do. If people are complaining that the cost is too much, when I'm giving the note, you will you all sit down. I'll sit down with them, interrogate those figures. If it is possible that they can reduce this, why not? We will ask for what is good. One, the quality of the product might be such that it will be able to satisfy what they are required to do. And if it's possible that they can reduce the price, why not? We also that if we can negotiate with them, I don't have any problem. Now, ECOWAS have come out legislate, giving directive that every ECOWAS member should be paid $50. And I'm sure they are complying. If it's possible that we can have a further discussion with them, saying that non ECOWAS citizens are complaining. Is there anything that you can do about it? Based on the job that you are doing, if you look about your, your cost and you think that you can reduce, why not? We all, make people, we all want to make people happy. And we will sit down and we decide we can negotiate with them. We'll do that. Have you had the opportunity to get briefing on what is happening in Nigeria regarding COVID testing at the airport? Nigeria. Have, they, have you had any briefing regarding how testing is done at the Nigerian airport? My information is that Nigeria is doing PCR, we are doing antigen. So we are do, there are two different things involved. We are not doing the same thing. Mr. Chair. I shall tell the nominee to let her in half and say, I shall tell the nominee to let her in half as a proper way to remain upright. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You said you tell him to do what? <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, normally all squares and perpendiculars are perfect points. So, so I'm only asking him to let her in half. To remain upright. Oh, thank you. Very well. That is not English. 
Yes, I'm not a black person. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to begin by requesting the nominee to have a look at his CV uh, because the name we have from His Excellency the President uh, is quite different from what you have here. Uh, do you, you, you tell us you are going to indicate your first and middle names? We only see Ofori. The surname is Siyama. But what, which, your first name appears missing from your CV. Or have you done a change of name? Are you now Mr. Ofori Siyama? Mr. Mr. Chema, what appears? What I said is what I, what I just said is true. My name is Ofori Siyama. Myself and President, we are all Kweku, so you always want to add Kweku to my name. So if you did add Kweku to my name. That is the reason. But my name, but my certificate is of yes, So, so for the for the record, officially, can you help us officially? Mr. Chairman, uh, officially, my name is of yes, Not Kweku of yes, as the president informs this committee. On, on Wednesday, so my name is Kweku of yes, But what is on my certificate? It's Ufuri Esnyama. Okay, as a chairman, uh, the nominee will uh, help us, uh, probably working with the clerk, to just uh, uh, clean up a few matters. Page two, epidemiology. Page three, the conferences attended in Abuja and other, other matters. I'm sure that that can be clarified and corrected with the clerk later. I want to quickly take off from where the Honorable Afenyo Makin left off on the Frontiers Healthcare Services Limited contract. Can you kindly tell the committee when the contract was signed, the, the contract before you? What is the, the date? When was it signed? Mr. Chairman, the contract was signed on the 1st of September 2020. So the contract was signed on the 1st of September 2020, which is the same day they began operations, because the Ghanaian airspace was open on the 1st of September. You are telling this committee that the contract was signed the same day they began operations. Is that, is that the information? Mr. Chairman, with the document before me, the contract was signed on the 1st of September 2020. So if so if the honourable member is saying that do you know when they began operations? Operations. I can't remember, but I know that this contract was signed before. But if he says so, I will not argue with him. Yes, they began operations on the first of September. There are two laws. You've talked about the PPA writing to the company to say that this matter it's interesting that uh, mere office rental is no longer a PPA uh, matter. Uh, but let's come to these two laws, the Health Institutions and Facilities Act 2011, Act 829. Section 11 of this law provides facilities to be licensed. 11.1. A person shall not operate a facility unless the facility is licensed under this Act. Two. A person shall not operate equipment in a facility specified in the first schedule unless the facility in which the person operates is licensed under this act. And if you come to the first schedule, for our purposes, this will fall under item numbered I, section 11.2 I, clinical and biomedical laboratory. The company started operations on the 1st of September when the airport was opened. I have here the certificate that the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency issued and is dated 10, 3rd November 2020. Have you been briefed as to how come the Frontiers Healthcare Services operated for well over two months in violation of Section 11 of the Health Institutions and Facilities Act before they were licensed? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, what I stated or what I tried to state was the role that Ghana Airport Company played 
So far as this construction agreement they have with Frontiers concerned, and renting them the space at the airport is concerned. I think that any other thing that they are supposed to do, maybe there are state institutions which are supposed to, may, maybe the Minister of Health, I don't know why that will happen, but maybe I think that maybe throw trouble over like me. Honorable, do you know for a fact that yes. at the time they started, they had, uh, is it Hefra? Honorable Pujato, is it Hefra? Yes, please, Hefra. They had the Hefra registration. Do you know that for a fact or not? Mr. Chairman, I don't know. The second law, the fees and charges, Miscellaneous Provisions Act 2018, Act 983, requires that Ghana Airport Company Limited or the minister in charge of the sector should come to this house. Section 3 of this law is very clear. Before the 150 United States dollars could have been charged. That was not done. Have you received any briefing why this was not done? The fees and charges Miscellaneous Provision Act, Act 983, breach. Mr. Chairman, I don't know. I think that this is a private sector business, and ministries or agencies don't come here to do fees and charges for the private the sector. The question was, have you received any briefing? No, Mr. Chairman, no. Not to my, not to my knowledge. Mr. Chairman, can the nominee look at the signatories of the account? Uh, sorry, the contract. The signatories of the contract. Can you tell us who signed on behalf of Frontiers Healthcare Services? The name of the person is Dr. Emmanuel Akwe. The designation is a director, and Ghana Airport was signed by Yakwapa, the managing director. How, how do you? Uh, Honorable nominee, how do you react if I inform you that per the incorporation documents which I have here, only two directors are listed at the Registrar General's Department. Jean Laurent Louis and Samuel Bansa are the only two directors. So the only two directors of who? Of Frontiers Healthcare Services. The incorporation documents I have here from the well, Registrar General's I, Department. I don't think that's a fair question to him. I don't think it's a fair question to him. He's only giving us a briefing. Okay. Uh, was the Honorable nominee briefed on these directors, Jean Laurel Louis and Mr. Samuel Bansa? Did the GACL deal with them in any way, shape, or form? Mr. Chairman, I have not been briefed about the directors of Ghana Re uh, Registrar General's Company. Mr. Chairman. Honorable, I've allowed you five already. You can have the last one. Well, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, since I have only one more opportunity, I will use it on another contract which uh, uh, I have been uh, uh, chasing for a long time now, the Ghana-U.S. Defense Corporation Agreement. The Honorable Aviation Minister told Parliament that Terminal 1 has been leased for 15 years to McDan Shipping Company and McDan Shipping Company has entered into an agreement with the United States military. We have been looking for that contract. Uh, have you been briefed on that, uh, that uh, contract, the Ghana-U.S. Defense Corporation Agreement, McDan versus the U.S. Uh, military uh, base, Terminal 1? Do you have any briefing on that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've been briefed by Ghana Airport Company that they rented the down floor of Terminal 1 to McDonald Shipping Logistics Company Limited in January 2019. Please, do you have the contract? Are you able to share with the committee? Mr. Chairman, I do have a copy of the contract later if you do, I can hand it over to uh, If we approve you, you'll be willing to bring that to Parliament? Yes to ask any questions relating to that, won't you? I want your answer to be on record. You'll be willing to bring it to Parliament for any issues relating to that, won't you? 
I said, should this committee or parliament approve you and you are appointed as the minister, you will be willing to bring that contract with Mark Dan to parliament, for parliament to examine it, won't you? Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, why after he's approved? Because he's still the present representative there. He should be able to get the document before his approval. Now, he is not the minister who was responsible. He said he has been briefed. <laughs> He's the president representative of his ministry. <laughs> the transport then did not include this one. Yes, you are wrong. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, now, Minister, I have three questions for you. In 2004, the government of Ghana signed a contract with the Meridian Port Services to run the Tema Port on a 20-year concession agreement. MPS is a joint venture between GPHA and MPS Limited, which is in turn a joint venture between Bolloray Group AP and APM Terminal, a subsidiary of MESC, as the two main shareholders. There's a JV arrangement which gives Bolloray 35%, APM Terminal 35%, and GPH 30%. There are reports sometime last year, a couple of years ago, that the 30% stake that GPHA held for and behalf of the people of Ghana has been diluted. Can you apprise us on this development at the port with regards to Ghana's stake in, the, in that joint venture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Indeed, it is so that Ghana Port and Abbott Authority, representing government, is having 30% shares in the Meridian Port Services Limited. Like you rightly said, so in 2004, when the agreement was signed, GPOG have 30% the rest of the partners from MPH also had 70%. Mr. Chairman, in 2012, I think they signed what the lawyers call further amendment to the original contract to execute the Terminal 3, what we call Terminal 3 at the port. My information was that GPHA was supposed to advance some money as part of their counterpart funding, which they were finding difficult to pay. So the agreement by the shareholders was that if they didn't have the money to pay by then, then the other shareholders will pay, then dilute their shares. So that's what actually what happened. So when we, we assumed office in 2017, the matter, the matter came to the attention of government. And we met the shareholders to tell them that instead of them diluting our shares, they should advance us part of our counterpart funding for future dividends, which they did. So now, we are able to pay, pay, the, pay the discussion we have with them. We are able to restore our 30% back. So now GPH still has 30% shares in MPS. Okay, so Ghana still, GPH still has the 30%. That's a big plus for Ghana. Thank you. My second question is on the Maritime Authority. I understand there are two arrangements. That's the Closed Ship Registry closed ship registry and the open ship registry and that is practiced in Liberia, which has a lot of revenue um, uh, prospects for the country. What is your position on this in terms of um, reorganizing our uh, position as a practitioner of the closed um, ship registry? Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, indeed it is so there are two systems that we now have when we have the closed registry and open registry. Because Ghana don't have a ship, uh, we used to have the, the Black Star Line, so we didn't allow anybody to flag our flag as it so we have now. Unfortunately, over the years, the then shipping line has collapsed. So what we are trying to do with other uh, shipping vessels or shipping lines is that, like you said, Liberia is part of the system whereby they allow other, other private or other countries to flag their flag as they so so that the other they give you golden shares 
or they have some form of revenue for you, then that is why we are having discussion with it. If we're not to be the covered, I'm sure we would have seen one or two ships flag, flying the flag of Ghana. So that is, we, are, we are having discussion with some of the vessel owners to see that we, they will come around and do this away until such a time that we'll be able to acquire our own ship. Thank you. It's something that you are considering. Okay, the last question is, um, it's an arrangement between Jean Dunol and Ibistec mm -hmm. that um, a 370 million USD multipurpose terminal, Atlantic Terminal Project in Takrade, was signed by a good self on, on, on the 19th of December 2018. Can you apprise us on this um, project and how it's going to benefit the good people of this country or how it has benefited us so far? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, if you look at the Takrade Airport, it was built in 20, it was built in 1928, so definitely the depth of the sea is very narrow. And now shipping lines want a deeper sea so that they will bring a, a bigger vessel, then their cost of operation will be reduced. So when we assumed office in 2017, GPHA has already built a key wall, about 650 meters key wall, so that we can build upon it to develop in terms of deeper seas. So we took a decision that we will, because we didn't have the money, the, uh, the, the investment required to do that project. So we decided to engage private people to see if they can partner GPHA to do it. Mr. Chairman, what is significant about this particular project is that the president insisted that we should let the Ghanaian business people, what we call the indigenous Ghanaian people, do, we should try and see if they can have the capacity to lead the arrangement of this project. So Ibistec, which is a wholly owned Ghanaian company, then we approached that. Because already they have started something called Takute GPH at Takwadi. They are doing offshore business for them. So we decided that we would try them and see. Mr. President, I can, Mr. Chairman, sorry, Mr. Chairman, sorry, I'm used to speak to the President, so. Mr. Chairman, I can speak to the glory of the Lord that they'll be able to secure the funding for this project. If we're not to be the covered, they would have opened the traffic by the middle of this year. But I'm hoping by the, by the end of the year, the first bed should be able to open, and the depth is 16 meters. So it's as deep as the one we're having in Port. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Well, Honorable Nominee, I tell you, he does. Um, because you were not in charge of aviation, it's a matter I'll raise with you perhaps after the vetting. Um, a national carrier and, you know, a flight with state interest or a national carrier, like we often say, is something that uh, I'm passionate about, and perhaps it is a discussion <clears throat> that we can have uh, after this. But, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I want to read two paragraphs of a letter from the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, dated January 11, 2021, to the nominee, and follow up with a question after that. Now, this letter was written to the Chief Executive Officer, Fruit and Export Terminal. The second paragraph is where I'll start from. As we did communicate to you in the said meeting, GPHA has been directed by the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, and I emphasis mine, GPHA has been directed by the Honorable Minister of Agriculture to issue a license to Fruit Terminal Company Limited, FTC, to enable them to undertake the handling, Steve Doran and Shaw handling, that's into brackets, of horticultural product exports in the port of Tema. The license is to cover the full scope of activities performed by FTC under the defunct 2009 agreement. Defunct, again, Mr. Chairman, is my emphasis agreement signed with FTC, i.e. the Steve Doran and Shaw handling 
of horticultural products export. According to the Minister of Agriculture, the directive is informed by the government's desire to promote the development of the horticultural segment of the agricultural sector. The minister further noted that reports he received from FTC indicate that the birth of FET has created a bottleneck to the exports of fruits through the port of Tema, and that the operations of FET are unduly adding to the cost of shipping horticultural products exports from Ghana. The position of the Minister of Agriculture requesting GPHA to issue a license to FTC is supported by the Minister of Transport. Mr. Chairman, I did emphasize two things because when the Minister of Agriculture appeared before this Honorable Committee, he denied giving this directive to the GPHA. Again, he said the 2009 agreement had not been referred to as defunct by Ghana Airports, I mean by Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. In this letter that I quote to you, it is said that you with the Agri Minister, even though the Agri Minister told us here that it was a matter you were still discussing together. Here in this letter, we are told that it has been concluded. Now, my question relates to the third paragraph, which reads, we reckon that the directive of the Minister of Agri, when carried out by GF GPHA, will offend the concession agreement we executed with you on May 18, 2015, which granted you rights to handle the horticultural products and related operations. Unfortunately, we are not in a position to decline the directive considering the source and the motive behind it. There's already a lawsuit or a hint of one written by lawyers of FET. Mr. Nominee, Mr. Nominee, they're hinting at us for $50 million plus. What is the assurance to this committee and the people of Ghana that we will not have a needless judgment debt before us based on these directives that have been given to GPHA, which you approve of? Mr. Chairman, I have, this matter had come to my notice. I don't know when this matter was written. This letter, sorry, was written. But Mr. Chairman, this matter has come to my notice about two, year, two years ago. But Mr. Chairman, my simple advice, that I, not that I cannot speak to this issue, GPHA is a corporate institution. We have internal mechanism with which these matters are resolved. Mr. Chairman, the danger we are posing is that if we don't take time, any time such matters do come up publicly, the credit rating of such public institutions are downgraded. We are being treated as a high-risk institution. I will plead with members of this house that this is the matter that I was handling until the election took place. Thankfully, I'm back. Like you rightly said, that the Greek minister did indicate that he was handling the matter with me. I will plead with the members of this house that they should leave this matter for me. We will resolve the matter amicably rather than coming to do this thing publicly, which will have consequences on the operations of the GPAG. I can assure members of this house that we started resolving this matter about two years ago. We've got, we've got into a conf what we call a conflict dispute stage that we were almost always conclu concluding the matter until the election took place. So, so Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, with your indulgence, I would like to plead with members, the honorable member that you should be assured that this matter will be resolved. But I wouldn't want to discuss this matter publicly because of the image of GPAG. Mr. Chairman, I would like to plead with you. All the assurance the honorable member wants is that you ensure that there is no um, judgment debt against the country. Mr. Chairman, I think the stage that we go to, we will, we will bring a makeable solution to the matter and there will be no judgment on the GPH or on the state. Mr. Chairman, just a quick follow-up on, 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 on that. So is, it, is the Honorable Nominee saying that the January 11, 2021 letter, which seemed to have settled this matter, can be disregarded or should be disregarded because you are still 
in talks to resolve this matter in a different way, which may not lead to Ghana being sued. Mr. Chairman, I think that this letter, this letter should be disregarded. Because even on the January 11th, there was no minister responsible for any sector to go in and resolve these matters. Like I said, we have started the resolution to this matter. So please, like I said, you can disregard this letter and you find a solution to the problem. Thank you. Um, Honorable nominee, Okada was a very debatable topic before the last elections, to legalize or not to legalize. You indicated that at the time the debate was taking place, you were already in talks with stakeholders to legalize Occurred. The news reports suggested so. The vice president said a different thing to contradict what you were reported to have said. The NDC at the time thought it was about time that we legalized Okada. What will be your approach to this issue of legalizing Okada if you are confirmed by this committee? Will you lead a campaign to legalize it or not? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think that I never said anywhere that you were leading stakeholder consultation to legalize Okada. I don't know why that. I said that you were leading, you were doing stakeholder consultation to come to a determination whether we are going to legalize Okada or not. That was the statement that I made. And the Vice President made a categorical statement that as a party and the condition pertaining today, it will not be possible for us to legalize Okada. What we will do is that, yes, like, uh, we still stand by the position of the Vice President, as the condition pertains today, we will not be able to legalize Okada today because the numbers are not pointing to the direction that we should legalize Okada. Knowing that the issue of enforcement, you see, Mr. Pre Mr. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to be an ostrich. If there is a problem, we should all point to it. We are having the issue of enforcement in this country. And based on what is pertaining on the ground today, it will be difficult for me to lead to the legalization of Okada. If by tomorrow, thankfully the police are trying to modernize their system of traffic control, if by tomorrow, a year, the conditions in terms of traffic management, in terms of enforcing regulation, becomes conducive, why not? We will assess it. But sitting here today, and knowing that enforcement is an issue in this country, and Mr. Chairman, let me tell you one thing. In 2010, the people who died out of motor cycle or tricycle was 210. The 2020 figures, out of 2,500 people who died from road accidents, 1,050 is after the of motorcycle. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, it is, like I said, that's the position of the party or the government today. If by tomorrow the police is able to come out with conditions that will make it conducive for us to legalize it, why not? But for today, what is pertaining? That's the position. Honorable Minister, when you say Okada, are you referring to two wheelers or it includes the three wheelers? Mr. Chairman, initially, we didn't have the Abubo yards in the system. So it was the two wheeler. But the law says that 2180 says that unless the, the vehicle or unless the motorcycle has four wheelers. So it, it presupposes that. The Abubo Yard is inclusive per the definition of the law because at the time that 2180 was enacted, there was no Abubo Yard in the system. Actually, I can say that some people had brought them in and were seeking to commercialize them. That's why we were specific on the three wheelers. You know, so we targeted, and, and, but there was a specific provision. I was actively involved in drafting of that one that the three wheelers should not be licensed for commercial 
is that that's where the challenge is. If I take it and use for my private purpose, I can run. The challenge is whether you can use it to carry fair pay passengers. If you use it for delivery of uh, parcels, food, that, that is also commercial. But it is when you take fair paying passengers, that's where the challenge is. But yes, your views are well noted. Yes, honorable member, you continue. The chairman, you are right. There are more challenges with, with, with that law. I mean, when you can use it uh, privately. Uh, so I can, uh, with my motorbike, uh, gives someone a ride, a pillion rider, as long as I'm not charging the person, then I'm not breaking the law. But once I decide to make money out of the motorbike I have bought, then it becomes criminal. So those are uh, some of the interesting issues with regard to the law. But you have stated that regardless, it will not be uh, legalized. My next question has to do with the controversial Caterport. 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 Yeah, you can some say Kita, Keta. I'm sure you know, Moscow or Moscow. There's a director general. There's a director general for the non-existent port. Drawing salary from the people of Ghana. You were in the seventh parliament and you gave assurances. Yes. He was in parliament and gave assurances in the seventh parliament. He was in the, he was in parliament in the seventh parliament and gave assurances. Yes, thank you. And gave assurances that by the end of twenty twenty, yes, you came to parliament and you gave the assurance that by the end of twenty twenty uh, we're going to see some work being done by way of uh, a port in Keta. Can you be kind enough to update us on what the Director General of the non-existent Keta port has been able to achieve so far? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, indeed so, that in 2016, the president made a solemn promise to the people of Water Region that indeed, if he's voted into office, that project, what a particular project he would like to execute before uh, his time has passed. Mr. Chairman, in 2018, because building the port is not an event, but it's a process, I need to take a little bit of time to explain this thing because I have been to this house, like you rightly so said to explain the processes with which we are going, we are following to develop the port. Yet, any time they keep on asking this particular question. So in 2018, the president declared that particular area after the chiefs and people of Qatar. And let me say that, uh, let's, let me thank the overlord of Angola traditional area for giving us the area for the port. So the president, after the coordinates have been done by GPH and the Soviets, declared the area, the port zone, through the Attorney General of it to the, so it has been published. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, we engage a consultant because this stage is as important as putting the infrastructure in its place. People are waiting to see that the infrastructure is there. But if you don't go through these processes properly, and we truncate any of them, we are going to have a problem. So, GPHA in 2019 engaged Sehon from Germany as a, a reputable marine consultant to take the feasibility studies or to do the feasibility studies for us. Mr. Chairman, when I came to the house, I did brief the house that by the third quarter of, or third quarter to the end of 2020, Sehorn was supposed to give us the draft brief for GPHA to pass our comment. And by the March this year, the final document will be with us. So Mr. Chairman, indeed, around November, December, Sehorn presented a draft copy to GPHA. We've gone through, we've given them their comment. They have assured us 
that by end of February or early first March, they will give us the final draft for us to either approve or disapprove it. Then they can issue the final feasibility studies for it. Because like you said, the feasibility studies will determine the level of infrastructure you need to put in place. You see, the marine work is such that, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, if we don't take our time and do a proper work, by putting up that port, the whole coastline will be, will be disturbed. So I will plead with members of this house that the, the stages that we are going through, or the stage that we are going through now, is as important as putting the infrastructure in place. And I can assure you that between April and May, we will do our market sounding about Kita Port. We will start the market sounding about Kita Port for prospective investors. We will brief them about the port that we are putting in place. And I'm hoping that by the end of the year, we can start the real engagement of building the port. So the process that we are going through now is as important as building the infrastructure issues. And if we don't go through or we truncate any of the processes, we are going to have problems. So I remember, I think we are on track. Though, despite the COVID situation, checking our timelines, we are still on track. And I can, and I, and I can assure you that you go to town around June for the procurement process, for the prospective and I, whether government is going to build itself with its own, or you will do PPP, or whatever arrangement that we put in place. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And my final question relates to the Ghana Maritime Authority. Ghana Maritime Authority. It was in the news for not very good reasons when the former uh, director was accused of conflict of interest and other related charges. He was asked to, uh, he resigned. Um, it was suggested that he was past 65 and that was the reason why he was resigned. Was his resignation related to the allegations that were raised against him and you directed an investigation to be carried out? Why haven't you made the report public yet? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, like the Honorable Member at least says that the man resigned because, according to him, he was 65. I don't know whether he resigned based on the report. But Mr. Chairman, I think like you said, right, the board did some work about Ghana Maritime Authority concerning that particular issue. I don't know if the report has been issued or not. If not, I'll find out. Then so if it doesn't brief the house or do the needful. So that is not of a problem. Thank you. Yes, that's unfair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Fourier Siama, I congratulate you. Um, I have obtained the official report, parliamentary debates, of Wednesday, 19 February 2020, in which matters relating to the issues that Honorable Ablakwa passionately raised. And the report captures him as having made those uh, observations here in the report. Honorable Suyini also pulled some questions on that occasion, including the Honorable the, uh, Majority, the Minority Chief Whip. Matters relating to Terminal 1 especially. Uh, related to this, Terminal 2 also came up. And the minister said there was a report that was being generated as far as Terminal 2 is concerned. Um, I don't know whether you have been briefed about that report on what exactly we have to do with Terminal 2. I know we have Terminal 3, which is virtually serving uh, the whole world. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this matter had come to my attention, like you said. The ministry and Ghana Airport Company were engaging some private sector people to use Terminal 2 to, for some other activities. Unfortunately, the people who came up to take this place for the business that they have earmarked for were hit with this COVID business. So I think the negotiation has stalled a bit because of the COVID. Let's pray, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we will be able to find antidote to this pandemic 
so that we have our normal life. Then we can then go back and we engage the people. Because we want the private sector people to uh, do that business. They, they also, the thing that they are thinking was that they can only break up their investment if we have four patients at the airport. So I'm hoping that when we have four patients at the airport, they will come back again for the negotiation to continue. But we have plans of let, uh, letting the place or renting it to some private business people to use it for the active so that we can earn revenue from them. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like you to update this committee on the um, current state of affairs of the whole airport, the newly uh, constructed whole airport. What exactly is, is, is the state of affairs at the airport right now? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Ghana Airport Company, I think, completed or the construction was completed in December 2018. In 2019, we had informed the operator, that is Passion and our that the whole airport was ready for them to study for their commercial operation. Mr. Chairman, they, according to the brief, they also asked for us to give them some time in order for them to do their own assessment and see if they could fly to go. Then this COVID came in. But I can assure the House that our had approached us again, or our had approached the ministry uh, saying that by June they will commence commercial operation to whole airport. In addition to that, we think that the whole airport has some advantage that the way it is positioned, we can use the place to train pilots. So government is partner with the private sector, even Tobia Feder has even approached us that he has some investors that we think that we can use the whole airport for training of pilots. These are some of the options that we are weighing, and we think that we will be able to fund uh, private people who are interested. Other governments, we open up the place for a commercial operation that our had promised, and we can also have some private sector people who will join us in using it for other training or other for airport facilities that we need to offer to the Ghanaian people. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, very true. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee, you have been the Minister for Transport for the last four years. Kindly explain to the committee three relatively simple and inexpensive measures you rolled out to make public transport more attractive to customers and more efficient to operate in Ghana. I did not hear part of the question, if the, if the Honorable Member can repeat it, because... What are your plans? You want three or more plans to make public transport attractive to the public? Attractive to customers? Uh, if you have three um, plans or steps you will take, Oh, in the past. Oh, okay. What you have done in the past to make public transport efficient in operation and attractive to um, passengers or customers. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, if you talk about public transport in this country, they are in two sessions. We have what we call the private sector people and the government people. So I don't know which area you talk, whether you're talking about the private sector or the government. Because the private sector information you have, private or public, yes. are interested. Mr. Chairman, in terms of public transport is in two sessions. Like I said, the government will pay public transport and the Honorable Minister, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Chairman, one, like I said, it is in two sessions. There's a role that the government can play for the public 
transport in terms of the government is role in paying the public transport and the private sector offering public transport. Mr. Chairman, if you talk about the government's role in terms of STC and MMT, when we assumed office, we realized that their fleet was very down. So what we needed to do was to revamp the fleet for the public. The government role in terms of the public tra tra transport, as I'm talking about STC and MMT. So for MMT, we are able to acquire 100, 100 buses for them. STC, we are also be able to acquire 100 bus, the buses for them. The government is trying to arrange Korean exit facility for the private sector people. Mr. Chairman, we came to this house. Unfortunately, we could not meet. The transport committee could not finish its work early for it to revamp them. So we, we are not going to only deal with the government institutions as far as public, uh, public transport is concerned, but also try to help the private sector to arrange buses for them also to help us to we, the second thing was, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, 2020, we were hit by COVID. And let me use this opportunity to thank the trans commercial operators, transport commercial operators, for the role that they played in helping government in solving this problem. Initially, we asked them to reduce their intake without additional cost, which they did for some time and got to a point in time that they could not do it again and government had to come in to allow them to encourage them that their business was going to was going to collapse. Mr. Chairman, going forward, because of safety issues, it is also important. We have passed law in this house to say that the National Road Safety Authority should become a regulator in the public transport system to regulate the transport operators. Because either two there was not a operator there was not a, a regulator. So it's rather one thing that I think that we have done in terms, it may not yield physical anything, but in terms of arrangement, in terms of regulation, we will be able to regulate them better to provide the kind of services that we require of them to do. Thank you very much. Chairman, my second question. You know, Ghana, we produce a lot of gas, natural gas, in the western part of the country. And this question relates to the pipeline transport system. We have some plans in the east, but because of the inefficient pipeline transport system, we are unable to transport gas from the west to the east to feed some of the plants that we have. As the Minister for Transport, what is the state, what is the state of the pipeline transport system in Ghana, and how do you propose to improve upon it? What transport and pipeline transport? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. 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 Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we are in this. We are working because the uh, the gas line is under the Ministry of Energy. We are intended. We are working together with them to develop this facility that we are seeing. So we've gone far in it, and I'm sure maybe when the Minister for Energy comes here, we will brief him because he's leading that project, and we are working together with them. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, my last question has to do with water transport. The oldest and the cheapest means of transport all over the world is water transport. What did you do in the last four years to ensure efficient water transport system in Ghana? Specific. Thank you very much, Mr. 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 Chairman. The water transport system that we have in this country, I can say that it relates to what is on the water loop. Mr. Chairman, when we assumed office, one area that we were facing a lot of challenge was the tree stumps in the lake, which was causing a lot of accidents in the water lake. So Ghana Airport Company, Ghana Maritime Authority, which is responsible for safety on the lake, because if any private sector person is even coming to operate, and the tree stumps is causing a lot of accidents for them, they wouldn't even want to come because it's expensive to remove them. So what we did was to have a navigable route of crossover services and remove the tree stamps. So now we have removed the tree stamps in most of this navigable route. So if you, if you realize that the accident of the water leak, in terms of accident caused by the tree stamps, has reduced, I'm not saying that it's completely eradicated, it has reduced radically. 
So because of that, we are receiving a lot of proposal from the private sector people saying that now the lake is safe for them to operate. In addition to that, in 2016 or 2017, the government of Ghana, because of the bilateral arrangement we have with Korean, Korean government, had proposed that they were going to give us some amount of money for public transport system. When we came in 2017, we pursued it. But the Koreans had then changed their policy in relation to, because they thought that the transport system was not social services enough for them to pursue that matter. So they asked her to rearrange. And the president told with them is that, look, it was not the fault of the people within that area that they should be cut off from the rest of it. And that is the only means of transportation mode for them. So now we sat down with the Korean government. They did a feasibility studies on this, on the lake. The, Mr. Chairman, I can say it to the glory of the Lord that If I, that they finished the feasibility studies. It was done by a Ghanaian company called Darren Consort. The Koreans have been here. They are satisfied with what we've done with the lake. And they are going to construct a lot of landing sites, reception areas, roads, and other, and give us ferries to make the transportation system on the lake very conducive for the people. So basically, for the four years, this was done. And I think that we've done enough you have paved the way for the private sector to come in to operate the lake. Yes, John. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to the nominee. Um, one key project that we are highly expecting in Ashanti region is the Buankrai land port. I must commend you for the efforts you have put in so far to make sure that you revive the inland port. In fact, on 5th November 2020, His Excellency the President, President Anand Danko Kufuado, in the company of His Royal Majesty Otunfo Sedu to the second, cut another sword for the commencement of the Bankra inland port. This was after about 18 years since the conception of the project. Despite the allocation of $330 million for this project, what firm assurances do we have, or are you giving us today, that this project will be completed in time and will not be left hanging as have happened in the past? Thank you very much, Mr. President, Mr. Hey, Mr. Chairman. I haven't received any news from the concessionaire that they have faced any challenges so far as the Buankra project is concerned. What they've told me is that they can start the project as because their timeline was that by October they should start the by April this year they should start the construction. But the information I'm having from them is that they finished the financial closure and they think that they can start at the end of March. So at the end of March the real construction will take place. We, Honorable Minister, um, and that the design take into account uh, that the design take into account the effect on the highway travel. What I've seen in the contract, Mr. Chairman, was the royalties that Ghana Airport Company was to earn from the renter rent review fees. What Ghana Airport Company will earn from the people, which is $10. Mm -hmm. You can't remember seeing in the document where they state the, what amount they were charging per passenger. I haven't come across this in the document. But you said that they agreed to pay $10 for every passenger that they test. Is that? Is that in the agreement? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, my understanding of this thing is that Ghana Eco Company was then having an agreement between them how much they would give to Ghana Eco Company and how much they would pay as rent. So maybe I don't think that the charges that they are going to charge the public is, is reflected in this contract. 
So they agreed to pay them $10. $10, yes. That's why you know. Yes. Have you cross-checked from Ghana Airport whether they are paying $10 or they are paying $4? They are paying Ghana Airport Company $10, but Ghana Airport Company share with other state agencies. So maybe the $4 go to Ghana Airport, but they are paying them for $10 for the, each service that they... they are they, uh, is Ghana Airport Company receiving $4 or $10? Mr. Mr. Chairman, my information is that they pay Ghana, as stated in this contract, they pay Ghana Airport Company $10. In your briefing, did you get an idea so far how many passengers have passed through and how much Ghana Airport Company Limited has received in total? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I did not ask them. Will you find out maybe when, when, you are, when you are approved whether Ghana Airport Company is truly receiving $10 or $4? Mr. Chairman, I will. Will you be surprised if you realize that it is $4 per person that Ghana Airport Company Limited is receiving? Mr. Chairman, I'm just going by what is stated in the contract. Yet yeah, they are supposed to pay Ghana Airport Company $10 for each test. In the agreement, did this state when the agreement was going to key start? That, the agreement. When the contract was going to key start, the date of entry into the agreement? The date of? The date, you know, the date they signed the agreement. The agreement was signed in 1st September. Come again. 1st September 2020. 1st September? Yes. Mr. Yes. Chairman, I just want to find out from the nominee, even though I know you are not there, but you've taken briefing. Yes. Is it the practice that when Ghana Airport Company rent out a space to any company, they don't bother themselves to find out what they are doing with the space? What they are doing is, is, is noted. It's a general public. It's a general public knowledge, because it's a, it's a public. It's a general public knowledge. So they will, they will not find it necessary to find whether by giving them those space, whoever is renting the space will have to comply with any other existing laws. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I think it is assumed that whoever is there should follow the existing law, and whatever regulatory. But which is responsible for the patient should also follow the right thing is done. So if it is assumed, will they not monitor to be sure? The mic off. Yes. In the agreement, is it stated which regulations they, they will follow? No. Is it stated in the agreement? No, there's nothing of that sort in that. You say it's not stated in the agreement the steps that they will follow. So once they rent it to them, the part they, con they are concerned, Ghana Airport Company is concerned, they assume that they will comply with any other law and it's no longer their business to ensure that there's compliance. Mr. Mr. Chairman, maybe Ghana Airport Company may have the rules and regulations with which all their clients should follow. But so far this contract is concerned, before me, none of this is stated in this contract. Mr. Chairman, I want to find out, in his briefing, what were you told the state of Ghana Airport Company Limited is? The state, the state, the, the company, Ghana Airport Company Limited, the state, the current state of the Mr. company. Mr. Chairman, our current state is very bad because our main source of revenue is this, uh, you know, when people fly, and that's where we get our money. Unfortunately, the COVID has reduced our our revenue has gone down by about 70 percent. So the state of Ghana Airport Company is bad because, because our minister, I know that even getting to the third quarter of last year, government has to build them up among some other state institutions to pay their workers. So their condition is, is very bad. As of now, unless the COVID situation improves. In your briefing, did you get an idea how much loan they are servicing currently? How much loans they are servicing currently? No, I may not be able to. In totality, I may not be able to. Uh, you, didn't find, you didn't ask in the briefing. Oh, they, I know that they are servicing some loans, but I need to be very honest. Are they having difficulty in servicing their loans that you know of? Mr. Mr. Chairman, basically, once their revenue has gone down, it will affect the servicing of their loan. Maybe we even need to go back. Um, I, don't, I haven't said it briefly. To go back for these lenders and see if we can renegotiate. It's done, it's always done business based on which upon which you contracted a loan. If your business activities go down, 
Maybe you can go back to your lenders to see if you really can renegotiate the terms of payment of the loan. In the briefing, did you get and uh, did, you, did you get to be told that on 9th July 2020, the then Minister Kofi Ada commended them for their ability to service all their loans without defaulting? Chairman, I don't have information to that effect. Is there any plan to either privatize, whether public private partnership, whether sales of any of our airport or any part of it that you know? In the briefing, did you come by any name called TAV, T A V, SUMA, S U M M A, consortium trying to engage Ghana Airport Company on uh, Terminal 3? To do what, Mr. Chairman, I want to look. To partner, to partner them. To? To partner them. Partner them to do? To partner them so that they can bring in financial muscles, renegotiate their existing finances so that they can own, TAP will own 33%, uh, SUMA will own 33%, and Ghana Airport Company will own 34%. Did you get any briefing on this? Mr. Chairman, certain has not come to my attention. But maybe if you approve me and I go, I can find out and brief the house. You know, Terminal 3 is one of our, 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 our best babies. Our best? It's a, one of our best babies. As, Be a, as what I'm talking about, us, I'm talking about Ghana Airport Company Limited. Best baby? Yes, our best baby. Our maybe our milk cow. You are aware of that? Oh, to the extent that it's new and it's modern, why not? If you look, go to the airport, it is the biggest space that we have in terms of movement of people. So definitely... Are you also, in the briefing on Ghana Airport Company, have you been told that they have sourced out maintenance they have done. Maintenance that their staff are capable of doing to a private company. Mr. Chairman, I'm not aware. That uh, they are paying almost $10 million annually to. No, no, no. I'm not in the that, briefing, you, that didn't come up. No, no, no. Are you, in the briefing, did you also get briefing about the current projects that they are embarking on? across the country, Ghana Airport Company. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I received some briefing that in Kumasi, for instance, we are, we are, they are doing the phase two and phase three. In Tamale, we are doing phase two now. We want to adopt, they want to adopt the Kumasi strategy by doing the phase two and phase three together. Because if we did, it reduces the cost of borrowing and other things. So, I know, like I said, I know that we are on Sumiani, they, they are also doing Sumiani. They've just completed why they've completed why in 2018. They've completed who in 2018. So I'm, I'm, I've received some briefing on some of the projects that they are doing. Are you also aware, in addition to this, that you said they are fencing Kumasi Airport, they are fencing the whole airport? Did okay. you get that briefing too? Yes. Will you say, with the current financial state that they have, taking on board all these projects is healthy for Ghana Airport Company Limited? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I know that with the current financial stage started in 2020 because of the COVID, if you watch, if it, it will interest you, in 2018, the passenger uh, throughput was around 2.4. In 2019, we have exceeded 3.53 million about 50 passengers. So their APSC had gone up, definitely, if or not to be the COVID. Ghana Airport Company would have been in a solid situation to undertake this. I also don't know when these contracts were awarded. Because if you look at the Kumasi Airport, the loan facility is not coming from the IGF of Ghana Airport Company. It's a loan that the government has contracted. So maybe Kumasi and Tamale is not having direct effect on that because the money is not coming directly from the IGF. It's the loan that the government of Ghana contracted to undertake this, these two projects. The only place I know is the Sunyani, which they awarded a contract by using their IGF, which is being affected 
by the unexpected COVID situation. So for Kumasi and Tamale, they are not being affected. They can still go ahead with it because the money they are using for the project is not coming from the RGF. What about the fencing, the fencing of the whole airport and Kumasi airport? Are you aware of the funding that they are using to do that? I'm not aware, but I'm assuming that it's part of the, 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 the load that they have contracted. But I'm not, I'm just assuming, but maybe I can also find out and come back. Yeah, obviously it's not part of the loan. Okay, fine. And if, obviously it's also having a toll. If, if it's also, I will, I will not challenge you. It's also having a toll on their uh, finances. Then, are you also aware of the construction of the apron, a new apron in the north? Yes. Yes, I've been briefed that they contracted it as part of the RGF. They used the RGF to, because the airport is due, they need to do it. Unfortunately, they were hit. So the, there are plans by Minister of Finance to take up this loan initially and pay, so that if their situation becomes better, they can then offload the loan back to them. So some of these projects are time bound, and if we don't do it, you'll be downgraded by a cow. So if they don't have the money, it is the responsibility of the government of Ghana if you, want, if you want to maintain our airport within the category of the best airport to do some of these projects. Mr. Let me tell you that our tower, at the civil aviation tower, is due. Akawa has issued a warning to us that we should change the tower. We have no option. I just informed the Minister for Finance that it is what goes beyond the criteria with which Akawa will come and assess it. So by June, we have to start the construction. Whether as a government, whether I, can I put company as money or not? The government must step in to provide them funding to do this project. Mr. Chairman, revenue leakages at the Ghana Revenue, uh, Ghana Airport Company Limited. Have you, in your briefing, did you hear about Le Concert, Le Co Le Concert Club? I haven't heard the name. Before. You've, you've not heard no, no, no. in the briefing, the, the briefing. You've not heard that they are trying to outsource the commercially important persons unit of the terminal three. I haven't heard it. And I hope you take interest to know who who are they, whether there's any contract and who are behind it, and whether this is not something that we should do on our own, looking at the situation that we are, instead of just outsourcing it to uh, private companies, when we can run it ourselves and make additional income for the Ghana Airport uh, Company. The Terminal 1, the Magdan Aviation, did you get the contract? Yes. Have you gone through? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I've got a copy of the contract. Like I said, this, this afternoon, this evening to you is that the contract that I have cited is a contract between Ghana Airport Company Limited and McDonald Logistics Services, January 2019, for a 15-year concession period. That is what I know about. Even though I know you are not the minister then, couldn't you have believed that if Ghana Airport Company Limited had done this transaction directly with the U.S. Uh, business will have fetch the Ghana Airport Company Limited more money than just outsourcing it to a private person? Mr. Chairman, I don't know when Ghana-U.S. agreement was signed, but I know that Ghana Airport Company and McDonald's agreement was January 2019. I don't know which one preceded the other. But if you ask me, if the McDonald's contract preceded the agreement with the, with the Americans, I don't know what the Americans specifically asked for the space, the down floor of Terminal 1. If indeed that is so, then automatically at that time, they, should, they need to go to Magdan. And my additional information is that they also requested, they were using the base for their F, F, feed base operation within the West African South region. And they needed a logistic company to do the distribution for them. I'm not saying that the two are one, but I'm saying that if at the time that they came in, the place has already been rented to Magdan. There is necessitated that the American dealt with him. If, it, if the agreement was in place before the Magdan dead, then we can have maybe some concerns with it. But once I'll be able to tell you the time that they had a contract with Magdan, that January 2019, I don't know when the, the American came in with a request for the use of Terminal 1.
Rejam, I want to find out from him, from the briefing that you had, did you get the idea that Magdan is indebted to them, to the Ghana Airport Company Limited? Mr. Chairman, I have not been briefed that Magdan is indebted to them. If indeed he's indebted to them, they must find a way to get their money from him. The rent that he's owed is about 2.1 million, concession fee about 3.8 million, premium for freight forwarders about 2.1 million, logistics center and warehouse at the Korea enclave about uh, 359,000 Ghana cities. Land acquisition as uh, sprinters about 168,000, uh, totaling 8.665219.37 million Ghana cities. Mr. Chairman, this is worrying, and I don't know the terms. Uh, I don't know when he's supposed to pay them. If indeed what you are saying is that is true, this is a commercial transaction, and uh, I'm, I'm expecting Ghana Airport Company if those debts are due to take all the necessary steps to recruit their money. If it is that they are relying on their work, I will just go in, ship them to make sure that not only Magdan, but anybody who owns it, you, 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 you collect our money from the person. Whether Magdan or any client who is at the airport then is not paying it. So assurance them. given is that when, when given this nod, you ensure that these monies are collected and collected prompt. Sure. Money. Mr. Chairman, why is it why are we not interested in privatizing the local airport, Kumasi, Sunyani, Takuradi, so that people can come and invest rather than people wanting to take part of what we have already invested and that is doing good? Mr. Chairman, I am not coming. The honorable member has brought a very brilliant idea. I will consult him and see how you can help me to ship the operations of the Airport. So, Honorable Member. Tamale, is that what? The Tamale one. Maybe Honorable Aruna Idusu may be interested in investing in there, but he should rather desist from trying to get the juicy one, the hanging fruit, which is Accra. I mean, no, no, there's no any good example anywhere in the world where people have privatized the international airport and in the long run have benefited. So let's take that and make sure that if people are interested in the developing our aviation industry, let them enter into the area that is not yet developed. Develop it and make the money, but don't, they, they shouldn't want to ride on the back of the well developed one that is already doing well to, to make the industry money. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll consult the Honorable Member too. Why, I don't know whether you took this briefing, why are they interested in doing another asphalt overlay on a runway that is meeting standard? It is okay by international avia civil aviation organization just doing an asphalt overlay on a runway that is already good. Why? Mr. Chairman, I think that I'm not going to our out, but I think that some of these asphalt overlays have time duration with which we need to replace them. I don't know if the time is due, but I'll check and find out. Yes, sir, what I will encourage you to do is that there's a deliberate attempt, in my view, I may be wrong, that to overburden the Ghana Airport Company with a lot of investment that its finances cannot shoulder, to pave way for people to justify why private privatization or private participation is necessary. So as we are going, I hope that you take clue and ensure that during this period, it's not the time to be taking too many finances on the balance sheet of a company that is doing so well, so that people don't take advantage to say that because it is not doing well, they will have to come and uh, part partner us to take us out of our financial difficulties. Mr. Chairman, I think I am, have taken the advice of the Honorable Member in good faith. But Mr. Mr. Chairman, some of these projects too are time bound. I can always come in to meet the international standards, requirement of safety and regulation. They don't joke in security, they don't joke with it. That is why they always check some of these things. Like I said, I did promise you that I have no knowledge about what you are saying. You are making, you are, you are alleging that the project that people are doing just overburden them so that their balance sheet will become weak, then you can justify 
what you are alleging. I don't have any information to it. But I will check. I will revert if it is necessary. But for now, I will not be able to speak to it or deny what you are saying. Mr. Chairman, the bunker is, I mean, it's been delayed over even my lifetime in this parliament. I mean, the, how long I've stayed in this parliament. Was there any special reason that caused for that unnecessary delay that he knows about the bunker in Lamport? Was there any reason for that excessive delay in completing that project that you know of? Mr. Chairman, maybe, I don't know, but so far as I'm concerned, maybe it's a decision by various governments whether to do certain projects or not. I know that this project, they started this project around 2006, 2004, 2005, 2007. Uh, I don't know for reason why they stopped up to we are decided to continue the project. So I don't know. I Did you have any reason yourself for delaying not to start working on it for who four years? You, know, you, know, you only went and cast out for its restart in November. If I remember, is it November 3rd or 5th that you went and cast out with His Excellency the President? Do. Did I do what? I said, was there any special reason that you also delayed it for four more years and only went in to cut the sword in November 2020 instead of maybe probably January 2017? Was there any special reason? Mr. Chairman, Parliament gave me the approval in September 2020 that we can then hire this strategic investor to do the project at Bonkra. I came to this house to seek approval. And in September, we had a video to go through the procurement process to come. Because when I was in the office, the World Bank, together with the government of Ghana in 2012, had concession a transactional advisor, a price matter house, to do studies into this project to find out their viability. And they presented the report to us in 2019, in 20, end of 2018. We did a market sounding early January 2019, and we started the procurement process. So we needed to go through the processes in order so that we don't file the procurement. Mr. Chairman, I just want to find out, is there, are there any timelines that you expect to get the Bunkra project completed oh, and functioning? Mr. Chairman, there are times like, unfortunately, uh, unless you give me the opportunity, I don't have the document, but there are timelines within the timelines within the contract with which they are supposed to finish phase one, phase two, and phase three. So, is it going to take two years, three years, four years, five years? I don't want to ten years. I, I, but I think that the phase one is supposed to take. I don't, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I prefer not to guess because I can come back always with the with the correct yeah. records. Mr. Chairman. Earlier he was asked about the DC net and the uni unipass, right? Why is Kashmir head minister? You don't like that the story. What what was the problem with the DC net that the unipass was coming to resolve? Mr. Chairman, I have said that the port belonged to the Minister of Transport, but the systems, the end-to-end -end system of operation belongs to the Minister of Trade. And finance. They will be the better people to explain the decision that they took. The concession was not under the jurisdiction of the Minister of Transport. And you weren't interested in what were the issues? All you knew was that there was a system, another exchange, you, the, old, the one who runs the port, you don't care because the other systems are managed by other ministries. You, the one Honorable the main leader. actor, you are interested. Is that what you're saying? Leader, even if he's interested, he's not competent to ask questions on it. The procurement, everything was done by other ministries. So. I mean, Simon, it's only fair that he, the one who operates the port, even as others come with the system, should be able to tell us, oh, we, we used to have this challenge, there was delay, there was this difficulty, and therefore, because I want to believe that those who are bringing the system don't do it in isolation with uh, we, means of transport. We, they will we, always do it together with them. We, we have private operators here on site, the first bureau. Right? We can grant them the space to operate their own business here. If they change their management, it will not be fair to ask the speaker or the marshal 
to answer why they changed their Oh, Mr. Speaker, if you care to know, the clerk will definitely tell because in signing the agreement, yeah. at any time they want to change hands in the use of the space, they were to get back to us. No, management. They won't tell you about management. This is about management. Anyway, I just want to find out Metro Mass, Metro Mass Transport. Some of the major challenges that are there and how you hope to overcome them. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the basic problem, there are two problems at Metro Mass today. That the renewal of their fleet, which are, some of them are overstay their scrap value and they are still on the road, which is causing them to use whatever money they do to, for them to repair. Any time the buses go, they need to come back and repair something. So we've taken a decision that all those overage scrap vehicles which are on the road, we take them off the road. So there are our major concern now to how to renew the fleet, which we've started. Like I said, we'll be able to acquire 100. Parliament has given us approval for another 100. There's another facility, Korea Medicine Bank, which the government is trying to secure for both government institutions like Metro Mass and SPC and the private sector. Another challenge, Mr. Chairman, is revenue leakage, of which the management has put in place strenuous system to curtail it. But I will not be able to stay because if I stay here, they know they will change their mode of operation. I think that that's one area that management is putting in place to stop revenue leakage. So the renewal of it, which Government is determined to use their fleet because most of their fleet are, uh, let me say, out of reach, and we are still putting them some, some on the road, which is not helping the company. And second, the measures we need to put in place to block revenue leakage, which management has put some in place and they are implementing them. And so, I really want to consider public private partnership in that area to be able to help in the finances because you know, government revenues or government, GOG, is that something that you can always rely on? Yes, thank you very much. Mr. 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 Chairman, it is so. As I'm talking to you now, we are in arrangement with the two private sector companies. One came to Ministry of Trade, which they directed them to us. One, because they supply buses to uh, Metro Mass, they are comfortable. When they came and we showed them the system that we put in place, they think that with the current fare that we are charging, if you're able to adhere or implement those systems, they can still recoup their money. So we are in discussion with private companies, like you actually say, said, to get some buses from them. We need to change mode of our financing of our buses. We don't need to rely on government. government. Once we put in place the system and the people know that they can recoup their investment. So now we have two companies on standby to do a partnership with us for a system. We put in place the system. They are bringing us about between 400 buses. 200, 200, and they think that they can recoup their, their, their money. So we are diversifying our mode of financing of these buses. Mr. Chairman, I'm done. Is it that I don't know which minister are we expecting to be able to overcome this uh, frontier <laughs> health services? <laughs> National minister, everybody, it kept rolling. Oh, let's see the transport minister. Now he has come. I'm coming. And he's still not over. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, I think that is over. Of, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't what know what you want me to answer. You have brought the agreement. You want me to answer, Minister of Health question. Honorable Minister, all we want is a copy of the agreement. Once they get a copy, if they will, uh, anybody has any subsequent questions, it will come out. Honorable. Yes, Honorable, Honorable. Sorry. Speaker, Chairman, Honorable Nominee, if if I can have your attention, um, you have spoken to the challenges, as was asked by the minority chief group, challenges at the Metro Mass. And you rightly identify uh, concerns about the buses, spare parts, and all that. Uh, honorable nominee, um, I don't know if it has come up to your attention, the Metro Mass. Apart from the challenges you mentioned, there are also lingering concerns relating to staff welfare. I concede you mentioned the leakage of revenue, staff welfare, and corporate governance. Some frustrated uh, staff are resorting to social media, pouring out their hearts and saying all sorts of things. 
can you assure this committee that given the north you will institute good measures to unearth or confirm what the challenges are and also deal with them. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, indeed the issue of welfare dissatisfaction has come to my attention. The management, because it has been a long-term issue, the management is working on it. Unfortunately, like I said, our basic problem is that we don't have enough buses to be able to, have, to generate enough revenue to pay some of these welfare issues. But going forward, it's something that we are going to tackle, and I'll give you a assurance that we will resolve that matter. Our government promised some time back uh, a home based career. Mm -hmm. What has been the progress? on this plan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, in 2017, government gave approval to then Minister Honorable Siadapa, cabinet approval to engage private people in four minutes home-based career. Honorable Kofiada continued, and I can tell this out that we've done a lot of work in this area. We are just about to submit, there were about 13 or 14 companies who submitted a proposal, we trimmed them down to three, and we are just about to submit the cabinet memo on it for cabinet to make a decision which of the companies we should go with. And I'm sure when it's done, we'll come to parliament for approval for us to start this home based career that we want to. Mr. Minister, the, I'm aware domestic airline operators in recent times have been complaining about tax on spare parts as compared to their foreign counterparts. Has this come to you? And if it has, any alternative way to deal with it? Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is one problem that, like you said, the domestic operators are complaining about it, that uh, the tax element on the aspect of are tax, or maybe there's a tax component on the afford the spare part that they import into the country to repair their airlines. Whereas, the foreign ones that come here, they don't charge them. So the, the matter is before the Minister for Finance. Uh, I will look at it with him. We, we have, we have, they've already engaged him in a discussion to see how best we can do to resolve this matter. And I'm going to continue the engagement to make sure that they get some relief concerning the spare parts, which will also enable them to reduce some of this. The, the fares, because people are complaining that the fares are too much. And these are some of the problems that if you are able to resolve, it will also help them to reduce. We can also engage them to reduce the airfares for our for the for passengers. Now, well, Mr. Desert, you know how important Ghana is, a geographic location and all that. Um, the dry dock project in Tema, I mean the shipyard and dry dock project in Tema. Uh, what is the state of that, Mr. Chairman? This is a problem. And I think I need to concede that in 2018, we have started the engagement of acquiring a strategic investor for the Tema shipyard. Because if you look at the location of Tema shipyard, and if you look at the development which is going on within the West Africa subzone, we need to take advantage of ship repairs. And Tema shipyard is the biggest within the subzone. Unfortunately, the equipment are out of use, absolute, and cannot be used for the purpose that is uh, created or the purpose that which we are supposed to use it for. So we started the engagement of strategic investor in 2018. In 2019, Aka Energy came in. That as part of their, their development in the oil form, they will need a shipyard to play an important role in their operations. So they were going to put in the funding for the project. So front and back, later 2019, they came to us to tell us that. So we stopped the process because we thought that once Ake was coming in with the funding and that they would add the cost as part of their POD, it was better for us, for government to then stay back, allow them to do the investment so that we can operate with them. Then 2019, they came here again and said that 
they're having problems in the development process. So they are hurting the, the engagement and we, they need time to come to us. We, st we tried again in 2020 to go back to the procurement process that we have started. Unfortunately, we were hit by this COVID-19, which is uh, a huge problem on our part. So with Thomas Shipyard, we are having some challenge there. We, as a government, we need to take a decision. Either we still go for the strategic investor, or the government should go in for a loan, not less than $50 million. Because the project that we are seeking to do, we need to overhaul the place. So that is what you do. Minister Desmond, is uh, relating to encroachment. Your mic. Yes. Um, very impressive understanding of the sector, and I commend you. You, from the CIS Parliament, I recall from the CIS Parliament, I was privileged to have served on committee who has been considering them, uh, matters related to airport and aviation and other. Encroachment of land belonging to the Ghana Airport Company has been continuous. Continuous from the CIS Parliament. Most of our report you see running through. I know you are now, I can see you are now going to the place. I want to raise the red flag. I'm sure it has come up to you. You have to be very drastic and stern. Otherwise, the land is being encroached almost, almost every day. And the state is losing out. Maybe you have some plans you want to share or not, but I just want to nudge you and bring you to your notice. Thank you, Chairman. I'm done. Uh, Chairman, I should thank you and also congratulate our colleague, the Honorable Siama. Uh, returning Minister for Transport by President Nana Dudankwa. And Chairman, just to refer him to some matters that have been discussed before, specifically handing over notes October 2020. And Chairman, I'm reading from construction of 12 coastal fishing landing sites. Giselle was on that question. And in your answer, this is the evidence we have. Axim, 48.7%. Discop, 47.9%. Mori, 42%. But, Chairman, I'm asking this question because Keta is 5.91%. Elmina, 0.5%. Otuan, 0%. So, Minister, Winneba, 18.16%. Then, Mumford, 41.82%. What accounts for this poor state of work in getting this landing size, fishing landing size completed, particularly in the areas that I have emphasized? Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chairman, I don't think that there's any poor work done. The sites, the contractors do not start the site at the same time. If you watch, they started at Zim and Discoff. Then they moved to other places. They start three or four at the same time. So that is the state of affairs. All the sites were not started at the same time. So you cannot have equal measure of work at all the sites. So Otuan, 0%, what accounts for it and what will you do about it? Mr. Mr. And what does 0% mean to you? Mr. Chairman, the reason why we stated Otuam in was that is if you look at the original contract we came this out for, Otuam was not part of it. It was because we had a different facility for Elmina to build a full port. I'm coming. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I will come there. <laughs> because we had a facility from... Belgian company or Belgian government to build full port at Emina. We needed to buy up the Emina money for Utuam and Usu. At, at that time, we had just cleared the line, we are just moving the equipment to site. So actual work has not commenced. But for now, if you go there, you see that some level of work has been done. And like I'm saying, we don't all the site, they didn't start all the sites at the same time. 
Doctor, please indulge me. A follow-up on the matter raised by leader. Winneba, the capital of Ifutu. 18%. Please, give us detailed explanation. Mr. Chairman, the Honorable Member knows perfectly that today, the work that we have done in Uniba, I can tell you that we have done between 35 to 40%. At the time that this report was being prepared, at the time that the report was being, that was the state of work that we've done. But for today, if I should go back and do the inspection, and can, he knows that we have done more than 40% of the work at Uniba. Uh, Chairman, Chairman, with your indulgence, Minister Nominee, there are Ghanaians in the shipping business who want to do more as indigenous businesses and indigenous citizens participating in the shipping business generally. There is contemplation of a domestic shipping bill which will put emphasis to allow foreign registered vessels to perform certain maritime activities only when there is no Ghanaian owned vessel. What is the status of this bill and what will you do to promote indigenization in the shipping industry generally? Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chairman, the bill is with the Attorney General Department for their comment. And like the Honorable Member just said, that we are trying to encourage indigenous Ghanaian participation in the shipping industry. So what the bill is seeking to do is to reserve some portion of the trading activities in our waters to the Ghanaian indigenous people, whilst we also protect their rights within the industry. Unfortunately for us, uh, the investment in this area is very huge. So unless we get people with that, uh, grips of the funding arrangement and that we cannot. So we are in the law, we've made an arrangement for people to come together. Or even if a foreign company wants to come and fly our flag, there should be a Ghanaian participation or a Ghanaian partnership, which is stated in the law to make sure that they are not shortchanged. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Chairman, I'm holding in my hands here the National Road Safety Commission report, 2017 annual report. And significant for my purpose is a quote by engineer Mrs. May Obiri Yabua, Executive Director, National Road Safety Commission. And Chairman, with your indulgence, I quote, Road traffic crashes account for an average of 2,000 deaths and 12,000 injuries each year. These deaths and injuries tend to be affecting mills in the productive age bracket and accounts for nearly 70%. You've responded to this question somewhat. What will you do to improve or work to reduce fatalities on our roads, bearing in mind the concerns raised yearly by the National Road Safety Commission. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chairman, it is so that the road crashes on our road is becoming alarming and we need to do something about it. Mr. Chairman, in ensuring safety on our roads, it's not only the responsibility of National Road Safety Authority. There are other agencies involved. So we need to deepen the collaboration between these agencies to make sure that their role that they are supposed to play in, in terms of maintaining safety on our road, they perform it. Fortunately for us, like I said, now National Road Safety has become a regulator to both those institutions which are supposed to play role in terms of safety and commercial transport owners. So now there will be a better uh, system because the regulator has now come in to enforce that road safety measure that they are supposed to put in place are uh, adhered uh, to. Chairman, I see in the handing over notes of the Ministry, Volume 2B, Ministry of Transport, 
Are you contemplating a request for tax exemption of fuel for an institution like Metro Mass Transport to which you say that some 1.55 million will be saved? Is that in your contemplation when you become minister? Mr. Mr. Chairman, that suggestion has come up in your discussion with the Minister of Finance because we think that Metro Mass is a special vehicle purpose which is serving the downtrodden people. If we said that they should compete in the market in the same way as commercial drivers compete, they cannot charge the prices which they are charging, which is affecting their revenue level. Because we know that the ministry is doing some disarrangement for some institutions. Which are so, so Chama, keep it there. Government is intervening. This is taxpayers' money. The private sector, GPR to you, there are Ghanaians in that industry. What support package do you have for Ghanaians in the transport sector? Because this one, you buy buses for them free. The private people use their own money, loan money from banks to get it. And you are coming to further uh, uh, kill competition, in my words, by the extension of this uh, contemplated uh, fuel tax exemption for them. How Mr. fair is this initiative? Mr. Chairman, that is not the intention of government or myself. We want to bring fair competition into the industry. Well, as, like I said, the Metro Mars was created for a special purpose. If you look at the pricing level with which Metro Mars charges, the transport operators do not charge the same pricing or the same fare. But nevertheless, if it is that we need to bring them in, rub them in with the request that they've made, and they can serve the people better, why not? So we are looking at other areas to see how we can make the commuter or the passenger have a better transport system. So the Honourable Member should be rest assured that it is not only limiting ourselves or trying to get the private operators off our streets. Like I said, 90% of public transport are offered by the private people and we cannot take their business from them. But this is a special dispensation that we are seeking to make sure that they all have a, the same level of competition. Chairman, the Ghana Maritime Authority plays a significant role, not just in regulation, but pro providing for marine security of our country. What's the status of the Ghana shipping regulations, Ghana Maritime Authority fees and charges regulations, and then the Ghana Maritime Authority shipping service regulations? What's the status of it? And as minister, what timelines are you giving us to improve our marine security as a country? Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to tell you that we are free the consultation. All these bills are with the Attorney General. I'm hoping that by the time that we are showing him, they would have free their comments. I will consult the subject legislation to make sure that all these bills are laid before Parliament for approval. Chairman, this question is as good for a transport minister as it is for a minister for sanitation. In your handing over notes, beach cleaning initiative, and a quote from it, plastic pollution is a major problem affecting the marine environment. Several tons of plastic waste finds their way into the sea and beaches. What do you intend to do about this problem to ensure environmental cleanliness and a green environment for the country. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I did not hear the answer that the Minister for Sanitation gave on this matter, but I think that this marine pollution is becoming a problem, not only in Ghana, for the whole world. And the earlier we take drastic measures in solving them, the better. We are, we are in discussion to make sure that we engage some private people who have the capacity to help us, either remove them or to put in measures that become punitive enough for those who dump some of these things in the sea. But like I said, the Minister for uh, Sanitation is leading this particular project, and we are supporting her to do that. But it's a, it's a, it's a major challenge to everybody that we must take very drastic action in resolving this matter. Chairman, may I find out from the nominee whether the, uh, Ghana has a digital navigation system? Yes, we have VTMIs. We, we have do. The VTMIs, yes. Our Ghana Maritime Authority. All right, which Chairman. Which can go as far as Congo, as far as, far as Angola and Mauritania. Does it get to Winneba? Is it? Does it get to Winneba? <laughs> really? Oh, it passes Winneba. <laughs> <laughs>
Chairman, uh, the nominee in an earlier answer to a question posed by one of our colleagues was definite about why airport. I was in Wa only last weekend, and there are cautions that the airstrip is not good enough uh, for our purposes. Now, you note that given the distance and that they are experiencing it even whilst we're taking off from Wa, assuming there is a medical emergency in Wa, you take it that a politician travels that road, God forbid. You are engaged in an accident and you are locked up between Sola Tuna and Wa, or you are locked up somewhere in Sandman Navrungu, where you don't have an opportunity to be airlifted. That can affect lives. So when you spoke about the Wa Airport, you know the real status of the Wa Airport, do you? Mr. Chairman, I have been briefed to some extent, but I don't know the rest because I When was the last time you were in WA as minister? WA as minister? Yes, you visited WA as minister of state. Oh, Just I Just traveling to the region. But I did not go by air. I went by... Road. Road, yes. Yes, when were you there the last time? Oh, last year I went to Cabo's place. Cabo's Nandam or... Laura Nan there. Laura, yes. Have you visited the airstrip before? I haven't. I haven't. You haven't? I haven't. When will you do that? Oh, immediately I assume the office. I will go run all these facilities to see to myself the state of these facilities. And then I can then... Why are you just operating in campus and Winneba area? <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 all right. One of the challenges of the Ghana Maritime Authority is funding for their projects. You have any intervention you think will assist them to see to the completion of those projects, apart from their heavy reliance on internally generated funds and sometimes commercial loans to undertake their activities. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Ghana Maritime Authority. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Ghana Maritime Authority is very important institutions in this country. Like the Honorable Member said, when it comes to our maritime industry or maritime domain, they are supposed to be the regulator. And, and I think it is important that we aid them in all things that they do to, for them to stand on their feet to perform the functions with which they are doing. So, like you said, the other project that they are doing, they have been getting funding from other institutions, uh, other international companies, bodies, and other things. But if it is necessary that government needs to come in or I have to fight for them to get some funding for a project that will help this country. I will push for it. And that is exactly what I'm trying to do. Chairman, in the U.S. and elsewhere in Europe, because of uh, carbon emissions and greenness and environment. Please indulge me. Mr. Chair, I have a follow-up on the Ghana Maritime Authority. Uh, in 2018, Ghana Maritime Authority, in the press briefing, indicated that for the first time, they've been able to make profits consistently. Uh, are you able to share light on this? Mr. Chairman, I think the Ghana Maritime Authority has improved on their internal reduced generation fund that they get from their... Uh, client or their customers. Basically, that, that based on that, they improve, definitely they improve on the revenue generation process. And they also, they will be able to secure some boats which is aiding them to check these illegal activities. So far as our sea, our maritime domain are concerned, whenever you are found capable of the offense, you are made to pay fines. And now that they have the, some basic equipment to monitor the sea, and also get funding from people who go against the law. Definitely they have improved for their revenue generation. But there's more that we can do if we have the equipment to monitor our oil food and other places where these illegal activities are taking place. And that's what we are, we are trying to do. Chairman, my, work, my question was electric buses, the way forward to curb pollution of the air and reducing carbon emissions and greenhouse effects. 
What's your contemplation as minister? What will you do about that? A shift. Mr. Chairman, in the earlier question, I think I alluded to it about the good job that Honorable Ayaga and the, the Minister mm -hmm. for Transport then did, and we are following that. Now, like I said, we've contacted Kamel Grief Fund, which is responsible for some of this uh, project. They, they give funding for some of this project. And our development partners too are also helping us to roll out this project. So, not longer time, I'm sure that we will be able to roll out this electric bus. But we are working on it. Honorable. We are seriously working on it. Uh, Chairman DVLA, you know when you do become a minister, I have a problem with silos of data across the country. DVLA is having data. NCA is keeping data. National Health Insurance is keeping data. The DVLA has a critical role to play in combating crime. Crime because when armed robberies are committed, normally they will use a vehicle. You hear that this vehicle was abandoned, or the armed robbers or the criminals use this particular vehicle. Now, you have to find a way to strengthen a relationship between DVLA and the Ghana Police Service in terms of the licensing regime. What pertains in the U.S., when the police stop you and they just push a knob somewhere, they can tell you your last traffic offense or your last offense as a driver. Will you consider doing something like that if you do become minister? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we have already started. Like I said earlier on that, Ghana police is not trying to digitize their, digitize their operation system in terms of traffic control, uh, which in terms of traffic control, and the information that DVLA have will be incorporated with this traffic control system that they are putting in place. So we are, we are going to deepen the collaboration between DVLA or any other institution with this with data that can help us to control the system. Mr. Chairman, this particular thing that the Honorable Minister has read has been an institutional defect for a long time. In dealing with institutional defect, we need to build both legal framework infrastructure and technology. That's exactly what we are trying to do. So, Mr. Honorable Member, we are seriously working on... Chairman, Chairman, thank you. Chairman, your own baby, DVLA. Why should government breastfeed DVLA? Why should government breastfeed DVLA? When will you win them off? And do you have any plans of winning them off? Because they must be self-sufficient financially to be on their own and to manage their own resources if they make better use of what they retain. Do you have any plans of a win-off for GVLA? I think, Mr. Chairman, under the World Bank project that they did with win-off GVLA, they, were, they needed to go through certain period in order for them to know that they, are, they can fully stand on their feet. And I think we have come to the conclusion of that period. And the President has given directive that that final stage or that final decision should be taken. So I hope that by the end of the year... Chairman, my question to the nominee is specific. Will you win of DVLA? Will you make them financially autonomous and independent? I will take steps to make sure that that is concluded. Thank you. Chairman, the other one is just an observation that uh, a high cost of procuring value books remain a major problem for the DVLA and then unfavorable revenue sharing arrangement with government and other licenses, uh, duties, and road fund. So, Chairman, I'm almost done. I need to respect the COVID uh, rules. But to end on it, Minister, when you take public transport, we must provide leadership. When you are now entering some institutions, they've built in systems or devices for disinfecting both the interior and the uh, intra-city buses. You have plans to do that as part of your contribution to combat uh, COVID, whether you want to get devices for those uh, public transport that takes heavy number of uh, passengers in making them COVID compliant. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I had earlier on answered that question that for now, we don't have the COVID, COVID, COVID compliant buses in this country. 
what we can do, like the minister, and I don't know what I say, that to, to encourage them to sanitize their masses and to follow the protocol that uh, the health expert has put in place. So we are encouraging them to do that. But in the long run, we need to acquire these buses and facilities to make sure that our buses become COVID compliant. Okay, Chairman, my in ending is, you know when they referred you to Frontier Health Services, does a name Benedict Peters ring a bell in your head as far as the provision of these services is concerned? Benedict Peters. No, Mr. Chairman, the brief that I had did not mention any name to me. You don't know any person by that name. But you appreciate that the contract that you have promised to give us is about renting of office space. You are talking about a regime where we have about 13 million passengers entering Ghana. And it, this is pre-COVID, was even about 30 million passengers. So if there's a procurement exercise to get Ghanaians coming in from abroad, flying in abroad to pay $150, million, $150, that's a lot of money. And this procurement doesn't only lie in a public procurement authority, given the numbers, the central tender board must have been involved. We don't find your answers to this particular matter satisfactory. We would inquire further. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chairman, I, should I comment on this matter? If you wish to. Mr. Chairman, I think my role here is to state the role of Ghana Airport Company so far as this concession arrangement is done. And that is what I have stated. Whether somebody is making abnormal profit or not, I'm not privy to the cost element of the company, their cost element to, to, to come to a conclusion that whether they are making abnormal profit or super profit. Mr. Chairman, when I'm approved, and you give me the mandate, or when I'm giving the mandate, then I come together. If that is what we want to do, we can all together interrogate those matters. But for now, what I can speak with is about the role that the Ghana Airport Company is supposed to have played in this transaction, and that is what I have stated. Chairman Bolga and Sunyani Airport, as priority for the minister. Bolga and Sunyani Airport, will you prioritize them? Even if it's a uh, some uh, small facilities that you want to get for them. I have to study what government policy is about privatization of our airport. And if it, if it is, yes, if it is viable... It your policy, your policy as minister. The, my, I don't have policy more than the, what the government has. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I do not intend to ask you any question. Just to let the record ask anyone be asked. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Let the record reflect that you have offered to give us a copy of the agreement between and the emphasis that the airport company provided space for the company to set up a system to test passengers entering the country. They did not do procurement of services. I think that record should be clear. Thank you for attending upon the house and uh, to, you are discharged. Colleagues, thank you very much. We did well today. We hope we can manage second. Same note. You said financial closure. How much is the concessionaire bringing, and when did they have financial closure? I just heard you speak to that. 
Mr. Chairman, the project is in three stages. We have phase one, which is about $120 million. The phase two is $180, and the phase three is $300 million. You want, to, you want to speak to the phases? So phase one, what are we expecting? Phase two, what are we expecting? Phase three, Bonkra Inland, what should we expect? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I don't have the document. It will be difficult for me to go through the stage that you said. But I know that there's phase one, phase two, phase three. But if this house approves me and they ask me to bring the, the content or the whole component, I can bring it before the house. Chairman, still honorable just to uh, indulge me. You came to this house, and even in the November of the first term of President Nana Kufuado, you insisted that you wanted this concession done, 330. So speak to it. The people of Bonkra probably are listening to the member for Ejisu and want to know what the fate of the Bonkra Inland Port is. Because as he said, 18 years from uh, President Rawlings to President Kufuo to President Mills to John Mahama, it's not seen the light of day. So speak to it. What should the people of Bonkra and Ashanti expect of you with this 330 million which was approved for the Bonkra Inland Project? Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chairman, like I said, I can give firm commitment that the project will see the light of day because there's no reason or they haven't complained to me that they have any challenges so far the construction of the project is concerned. So, so far as I'm concerned, we are, we are, we are comfortable and the project will come up. Um, I, the, as a follow-up on the Buanca Inland Port, we know that the rail line's availability will hugely enhance the efficiency of the inland port. I want to find out if there is a coordinated program between your ministry and the Ministry of Railways to ensure that both the eastern rail line and the western rail line will pass through the inland port. Yes, Mr. Chairman, there's a coordinated program to make sure that the railway line passes through the Bonkra inland, Bonkra logistic terminal. Honorable Novini, I, I'm, I commend you on the Bonkra, and that's the minority leader right here intimated something that's been on the drawing board for a very long time. Now, are you able to tell us um, the deliverable specific to you as distinguished from that of trade ministry? Because I know there's some correlation between yourself, your outfit, and that of trade. I hope there's no confusion. No, there's no confusion because, because it, is a, it is like a terminal. At any port or at any terminal client system, the, the rules are defined. The responsibility of the Minister of Transport is to put up the infrastructure. The Minister of Trade and Minister of Finance will then come in for the operation of the place. So the terms are clearly spelled out. Final question. Uh, people with disability are unable to use structural and other forms of public transport in the country. What will you do to ensure that our public transport system is disability friendly? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. This matter is very serious. I think my attention has been drawn to it recently by a group of people who came to my office with a complaint to say that they are not able to assess public transport. Because, Mr. Chairman, if you look about the dialogue system, the government mode of public transportation, we have it is disability friendly. But it is only the private sector which controls about 90 percent of public transport system. That is why they don't have this thing. We are in talking with them. But Mr. 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 Chairman, it comes back again. The government should be able to facilitate funding for the private sector people who are engaged in public transport. But so do you we'll be able to direct them about the need of the disability people. So, but and per national road safety becoming a regulator, it is going to be one thing that they are going to insist. They are going forward. This needs by the set trap. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Honorable nominee, can you apprise this committee in Ghana on the status? 
Can you apprise this committee and Ghana on the status of the Sunyani Airport? Please, let your brief contain the date that the airport will be reopened for you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the brief I had from Ghana Airport Company is that the contractor is on site and they are hoping that by the middle or end of this year, you should finish. Once we finish the work that you are doing, we will engage the private operators like our and person to see if they can use it, they can go to Sunyani by and can. Madam, the difficulty we are facing, Honorable Member. The difficulty we are facing is that government doesn't have an airline, as I'm talking to you today. So the private sector people have their own way of assessing whether the route is profitable for them or not. But we are hoping that by the time that the Simeone Airport is concerned, because I know that there's something on the pipeline that government is in, we are in hurry to, fall, to have a home-based career. Maybe at that time we would have found a home-based career. They're on our own. We can then fight. But, but I hope, but, but I have every reason to believe that by the end or the third quarter or end of this year, you will complete the work at Sunyani Airport. And I, I'm, I, I, can, I, I, would, I have every hope that our or any other airline will then go to Sunyani. Do you also want to be remembered at the end of your turn as the minister who started airports in the South New region? and how are you going to do that? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, government will try as much as possible to put port infrastructure in every region if it, if it is possible. As much as possible, you would try to put infrastructure, infrastructure facility in all the ten, if you, in all the ten, in all the cities within in this country. I will keep a, a copy of this answer. We all know the source regions include Buno East. Thank you. Gisela, I'm told. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee, I just want to find out from you um, the landing beaches. I think about 11 landing beaches were constructed along the coast. The chairman, I think now it's about 13 or 12. 13 or 12, yeah. all right. 13 or 12. So the landing beaches were constructed along the coast, according to 13 or 12. But a few of them, I cannot speak for all, but a few of them, especially the one in my constituency, Senior Breku, was either of poor construction or the studies were not done right. But what it was set to, sought to achieve actually turned the other way. To the extent that over 17 fishermen had their fishing teams, had their canoes damaged, either from the outboard motors or canoes knocking into each other because of the tidal effect, effect of the tide. And so the breakwater was not able to act in the way or perform the function in which it was supposed to. What measures are you taking to rectify that? Because the sea has never receded in the manner in which it has now. And also, people's livelihood has been affected because the canoes were that badly damaged. And they are very expensive to acquire. That's my first question. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I don't think that we have finished the construction of the landing site. We are still in the process of constructing them. Some are 50%, some are 40 some are 30%, some are even 10%. So the construction, we haven't finished the construction. Mr. Chairman, the, mat the matter that the Honorable Member mentioned is true. During the construction period, I mean, some of these things are bound to happen. For instance, where she, I know where she's coming from, Senior Group, when during the construction, there were some few issues at the side there. I think that we had a heavy rain and some of the canoes were affected. The fishermen drew attention to it. I went there myself, we met them, 
you brought their concerns to the engineers and they've taken them into consideration. They've promised that whatever concern that they, the people have made, they will incorporate it to it. So, Madam, Honorable Member, I can assure you that their concerns will be taken into consideration mm -hmm. and I'll make sure that those concerns are addressed. Thank you very much. My second question, we move to aviation. Um, why did the nominee shake his head? <laughs> um, during the era of um, President Mahama, when the Terminal 3 project was being conceived and everything being put together, there was a charge called the Airport Passenger Service Charge. During the era of President Mahama, when Terminal 3, KIA's Terminal 3 project was being put up, that and other capital expenditure that the airport company was incurring, there was a charge called the APSC, which was leveraged on to be able to get the loan for the airport infrastructure. Now, in 2019, the government decided to allocate 14% of the APSC and 10% of the landing charges to three institutions. GCA, we got 7.5% 7, 7 of APSC. Ministry of Aviation got 1.5% per the GCA Amendment Act. And then GMET got 5% and also 10% of the landing charges. Would you consider a reallocation of this arrangement of the law? Would you consider a reallocation reallocation of these charges. The reason being, during the financing in 2014, 2015, it was on that, it was that, it was those monies that were leveraged on to be able to get the loans for Terminal 3 and the others. And since then, they have been eaten away with now this law. And so these are one of the reasons why airport company, aside from over recruitment and other internal issues that went along, this is the reason why airport company, which was a tier one state-owned enterprise, is having such struggles. GCA, GACL is often asked to waive APSC when it comes to hatch flights. And that has been over a period of time. Quite a few agencies like customs and immigration and so on and so forth also rent, also use up space in the terminal, which they did not pay for. So there are quite a number of issues that have given them that, that issue that problem of whereby, like I said, at first they had a clean bill of health. They had a good balance sheet even to borrow on before. But now they have challenges. Can I finish, please? Unless you want to answer the question for him. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I would thank the Honorable Member to, for bringing this matter to my attention. If I get there, these are some of the issues that we are going to look at it and see how we can find a solution to it. So maybe I can, from the from a from a narrative, she seemed to have a depth of knowledge in the matter. So maybe I can even consult her to help me in resolving the matter, some of the challenges. So, Mr. Chairman, that's a very tactful way of getting out of the situation. The last one is the last one is encroachment on airport lands. The last one is encroachment on airport lands. There are some sensitive equipment that do not, do not need obstacles in their way. Now, when people encroach and build buildings and so on and so forth around near this sensitive equipment, it can actually affect air safety. What are you going to do about that? What drastic action will you take with regards to that? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, this issue, like you said, is even affecting flight or commercial operation to our airport because some of the private stations have mounted their mast and I'm sure which is affecting the movement and the technical operation of planes and other uh, my information is that this matter has been brought to the attention of the communication minister to look at it so like you said it is rightly so we will sit down and see all the state institutions or other people other private or public which are facilities along this or around these areas which is impeding the operations of the airport to see that you can reallocate them or let them move so that you can have free flow of uh, the, the flight. Thank you. Yes, no, Patricia, PJ. Right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
that Jebanar, I remember in 2017, when the Honorable Minister nominee attended to this house, that, or attended to this committee, the appointment committee, the issue of frequent accidents on the lake, water lake was of great concern. Mr. And uh, the minister promised that he was going to take out stamps on the water lake. I want to know the status of what that is. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, like earlier, like earlier I said that before 2017, we were having a lot of accidents being caused by the tree stamps on the water lake. So when we assumed office, what we did is to identify the navigable route for these canoe, traditional canoe operators or the ferries. And like I, like I said, what I've done is that we have removed the tree stamps on this navigable route, that's Dambai, Dambai, Overbank, Katakrachi, Yeji, Makango, and some few, about six or seven areas we have removed the tree stamps. So it has reduced the accident on those navigable routes. That is what, what we have done on the water lake. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My next question is that uh, in some countries, uh, the countries ensure that advertising boards are placed above their uh, buildings. There is a view that the advertising boards erected along the roads contribute to a road accident. Do you agree to this view? And what do you intend to do if given that note? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this issue has come to the attention of the Minister. Mr. Chairman, since the advertising board had a fine in a district or a municipal area, we are now in discussion with the Ministry of Local Government which rent these spaces to these advertising companies to erect them. In addition to that, like I said, the National Road Safety has now become a regulator. So we are going to come out with the, with the standardization. And we should, um, the Ministry for Local Government should enforce that whoever wants to erect advertising board must first of all take care of the size and the location. So we are now in discussion of discussion with the Ministry of Local Government to make sure that they standardize. Okay, thank you. Uh, follow up on that. Uh, are you going to collaborate with the Local Government Ministry uh, on this? Yes, because that may, they give the lands or the space to the advertising companies. My final question. Uh, I'm coming back to the, uh, the trees, uh, the stumps. I've learned that it's of certain quality, and I want to know what will be what will be the use for the stamps that will be taken out of the water lake. If you have a special <laughs> program for that, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it is, my information is that they use it for so many things, but in 2012. My information is that in 2012, the government of Ghana gave the concession on the lake to a private Canadian company. What they did was that they removed what they term the economic value and left the rest that they don't need. So basically, the ones that we can use it for project has all been removed. The Canadians, they, they concessioned the, the lake to them. So they removed the economic one, they left what they, in their, in their view, they, what they term on, on, on economic value. Yes. Yeah. Well Honorable nominee, congratulations. Um, my question relates to water transport. And um, there is a statement here attributed to you, dated 5th August 2019. And you are record as having, on record as having uh, stated as follows, I want to quote, Government of Ghana is engaging the World Bank to develop 
the Volta Lake as part of a regional multimodal project to connect the country to neighboring countries from the Tema port, unquote. Now, subsequent to this statement attributed to you, I, I have become aware that the, your ministry commissioned two studies relative to the Volta Lake and its um, development. And those two studies were sponsored by our development partners, namely the World Bank and the Korean Exim Bank. My question is, why did you commission two studies in respect of the same Volta Lake and about the same time? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, two studies are going on in the Volta Lake, but they are not for the same purpose. You know, the construction of the railway line from Tama to Akosombo or Tranquil at Akosombo, we need to use the lake to ferry the goods from there to other Bupi or Yapi, wherever we decide to go. So the World Bank, under the Transport Sector Improvement Project, that GSIP, is financing a study, complete assessment, assessment study on the lake to detect, because we want the private sector to play that role. And if a private sector must come in, then you must, the private sector person must know that the operation of the lake, that's what we call north-south cooperation, is profitable. So that is what the World Bank is doing. And the, and the project is being undertaken by Vision Consult, a Ghanaian company. The World Bank themselves did the procurement for the consultancy without involvement of government of Ghana. And a Ghanaian company won. For the feasibility studies, the Korean government, like what I said, had decided that what we term as social impact assessment to develop this landing site, the construction of reception area at the Bible Ferry, we have identified a particular pro project. So they are, they are causing a study, the feasibility study into that project to determine the cost and the location of these areas. And that is what the Koreans are doing. The Koreans are doing feasibility study according to the social amenities they are planned to consult on the lake, while the World Bank is doing a complete study to determine the economics or the economic value or viability of the north-south operation mm -hmm. on the lake. Chairman, so, if, I, Chairman, if I can indulge you and the Honorable Agalga, just a follow-up, uh, Minister. Mm -hmm. Volta Lake Transport and its development, you have traveled extensively as Minister MP. I have traveled, I believe Chairman to have traveled. If you take Helsinki in Finland, you want to travel to Stockholm, just around Sweden, and probably extending to some of the Nordic countries, they use the same water source, about the same, as what pertains between Akusumbo traveling through the water to Bupe in Northern region. When you do get approved as minister, what will you do to give light to this dream? You know, it has an advantage of reducing the heavy vehicular traffic, Kumasi Techima Kintampo, Kumasi Accra. What will you do about it? Because what is referred to as a World Bank interest is to make that mode of transportation viable for the people of Ghana. What will you do specific should you become minister? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Like he said, the heavy trucks, which is causing a lot of harm or damage on our road, if we develop the lake, not only will it reduce the burden on government, it also cuts the journey from carrying the goods to the north by almost about 400 and something kilometers. So the, the, the issues are not, if you're able to develop the lake, to go into our advantage. That's what I said, that the World Bank, because of the railway line that we are constructing, is, co is causing a study into the economic viability of the lake. Mr. Mr. Chairman, here is the case that you want the private sector person to join you to develop the lake. If you don't present studies which are convincing enough to him, he wouldn't come. So before we can do any real investment on the lake, 
you must, you must know the cost or the investment that we need to do on the lake. And that's what the World Bank is helping us to do. Thankfully for us, Mr. Chairman, the social in, uh, project that normally scared the private sector people to do are being overtaken by the Korean Medicine Bank. So now when they come in, they are only in to do what they claim to be commercial operations on the lake. So I hope that if the World Bank finish the studies, we will get more private people now that the social amenities or what they call social infrastructure project has been taken by government. Honorable nominee, how much is involved in the Korean Exim support? What specific projects are they going to provide to enhance social services on the um, lake? And when will the project commence? I want the specifics. Mr. Chairman, uh, the amount, I think it's arranging between 80 to 100 million. I think the Minister, for, the Minister of Finance will be able to speak to you because it is part of the master facility arrangement that we are having in Korea. But I'm sure it's between 80 to 100 million dollars. Mr. Chairman, like I said, it comprised of consulting modern landing sites on about six areas, that is Dambai and Dambai Overbank, Katakrachi, Yeji, Makango, and Injeri, to consult those landing sites. In addition, they are going to consult a reception, modern reception areas for the passengers. If you go, the conditions with which our people stay there to wait for these ferries, it's very, it's not good, it's very bad. In addition to that, they are going to buy us two modern ferries to do the cross ferry services or the cross over ferry services. And they will consult a slipway. They will consult roads leading from the lake. Because when you immediately you cross, there must be roads leading to various villages. They will also consult some roads to the villages. So these are the components of the project. And when, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we are late. I have to confess with you that because of the COVID, the Korean delayed in coming. So they, they delayed, they came in, awarded a contract to a Ghanaian consultant. My information is that by the middle of this year, the consultant will complete his work and send the report and the template for the tender process to the Korean. They will do the procurement process, they will do the procurement tender in Korea. Choose a Korean contractor, bring them to join Ghanaian contractors who will do what we call the local component within the project. So I'm hoping that by the third quarter of the year, we should start the project. But now, all the arrangements have been completed. So, thankfully, the people of beyond the water lake will have some relief. My last question. Um, Honorable nominee, I have in my hands the budget statement and economic policy for the 2020 financial year. At page 167, I know at the time we served at the Ministry of Transport, Aviation was a separate ministry, but you're going to, um, the two have now been incorporated. So I'll be asking you to tell me what your briefings um, reveal in relation to the construction of an airport in the Upper East region. At the moment, when the Upper Easterners arrive in Tamil, you have to travel three miles before you get to the Upper East Regional Capital. Now, at page three hours, at page 168, this is what the Finance Minister said. And Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I read. In addition, assessment was carried out on the suitability of a potential site identified for an airport in the Upper East region. Feasibility studies will be conducted on the two proposed airports to secure funding in 2020. So the assurance here was that funding was going to be secured in 2020 for the Upper East Regional Airport to, for construction works to begin. We're in 2021. What is your briefing in relation to this subject? 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this matter has been brought to my attention, and when I found I think that we have some few challenges because of the COVID situation. But then the Minister for Finance has assured me that all things being equal, he will make sure that by the end this year, we will arrange or we will find the funding for the Upper East Airport project. So, Honorable Member, I know that that's where we come from, and your people will be happy that you ask this question. But uh, be rest assured that all things being equal, we will start the project this year. Yes. Um... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. DVLA and online drivers seem to have some issue. And the online drivers were complaining that they were being, certain charges were being imposed on them which were not being imposed on other commercial drivers. What has been done to resolve the challenges that online drivers face in this country and to promote um, the use of apps and other such technology to facilitate public transportation in the country. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, the minister is right. This issue has been a major concern between driver and licensing authority and online drivers. The driver and licensing authority is of the opinion that once they are doing commercial business, then they should go through the normal process as other taxi drivers or other people are going through. The online drivers are, are of the different opinion. And I quite remember that last year, the Minister for Communication itself stepped in to try and see how we can resolve the issue. I've had some meetings with the DVLA, and what we need to do is that, thankfully, if I'm approved, I will sit down again with the Minister for Communication, and let me thank her for the good job that he did. He stepped in when I was away to make sure that the, the strike action that the online drivers threatened to embark he called us. So, Mr. Madam Minister, let me use this opportunity to thank you, but I, I, I can tell you that. But, Honorable Minister, what is the complaint? That they are not commercial drivers? That, there's, there's some level of misunderstanding, but that they think that they should be treated separately rather than... Because As what? Are either a commercial driver or a private driver. Yes, because some of them private are saying... driver, you pray for yourself, but once you have... People hire you just because you use an app. Nothing changes. You must be registered as a commercial driver, even if it's a separate entity, a separate arrangement. But the charges are for commercial drivers, just like taxi. You do twice a year. Because their position was that additional charges, GVL was charging them additional, and whenever the additional charges are incurred, the company deduct that thing from their earnings. And that was where the difficulty was. But like I said, thankfully, the minister stepped in. We are sat down with the DVL. We have some level of understanding for them. And I hope that when we are approved, we will be able to resolve this matter. Whether you should treat them separately as a company entities or as mere taxi drivers, and that they should go through the process. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I know because you have come from the area, you are very passionate about some of this, but times are changing and we need to also listen to their concerns. You know, I'm, I'm just a comment. There's a group of drivers operating at the airport. They are commercial drivers. They call themselves hiring vehicles. It means that you're commercial. But they don't want to be treated as commercial vehicles. By arrangement, commercial vehicles must do the road business twice a year. And it is those that they are complaining about. I even insisted that you must be identified as required by law, the yellow background. They said that will uh, bring down their value. That's OK. But twice a year, you must comply. I don't know what that is a problem, but I'll sir, please continue. I believe they were being asked to take some kind of insurance and pay certain fees twice a year and certain charges that they felt were a bit unreasonable in view of the fact that they were franchisees of these international 
firms. Now, I'm not sure if DVLA has some interaction with the Ubers and Volts and others who are actually the companies that are using the applications and the, 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 the commercial drivers and franchisees off. But as you indicated, we'll collaborate and see how we can resolve this issue. Are uh, the Goro Boys still at DVLA? Goro Boys. I know that the, um, some automation and digitization of your services, DVLA's processes has taken place. And I'm wondering if that has driven the Goro Boys out of business or they are still, they have adapted to the new circumstances and are still in operation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think that today, if you mention DVLA's name, Goroism had come down a bit. I'm not saying that it's completely eradicated. But yeah, the Goro Boys is down. And <laughs> had come down a bit. I'm not saying that it's completely resolved. But it's all the issue of transparency, the issue of introducing technology into the system. And if you introduce technology, we don't be.